All right, guys, I'm excited about this lesson. One, because eagles were my favorite thing to draw and paint ever since I was in first grade. But two, this should be a really nice uh, lesson to teach you a lot about color mixing, uh, different ways of masking and using paper stencils. Um, and so I'm gonna go over everything that you're going to need to complete this painting. And so this lesson is one of those where you can follow along and do everything that I do and you will paint exactly what I paint. And so to do that, um, in this video, below the video controls, there's a resources tab. You can click on that and you will see everything you need to go ahead and download and print out uh, to get started. So guys, just a little more explanation here. Here's the actual painting that I did for this lesson. Again, that's 12 by 18 inches. And so I um, took a nice picture of that and I sized it down and I made a file that you can download under the resources tab under the video controls, download this Eagle to print reference. And if you print it at 100% size, it shall, it'll come out like this on a standard sheet of paper. So eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. And um, if you're gonna, um, being that this was sized a little bit differently, um, the proportion for eight and a half by 11, that's, that's what this is. So if your canvas is around eight and a half by 11, you'll probably just need to paint a little bit more sky or something like that. Um, everything else should work fine for eight and a half by 11 if that's kind of the size, if you're just doing this on paper or a canvas about that size. But you could um, print this to any size you want. I've included it at 180 DPI resolution, so you should be able to blow it up if you want to, and uh, or print it smaller if you want to paint smaller, if you've got something small to paint on. Um, this is the other part that you can download and cut out, and so when you watch the video, you'll see how to use this. This is stencil files for doing these feathers. And so the medium size is the one that will match um, a standard printout in 8.5 by 11. So um, if that's the size you're going to do or close to that size, use this one. If you're going to enlarge it, you can use the larger size. If you got smaller, you can make it smaller. So anyway, so print those out and then cut them out with a standard knife like this. And uh, then check out the rest of the video to see everything else you need. I've already printed mine. I've chosen to work on an 18 by 12 inch surface and so this is printed with my large format printer and I documented on video how to cut this out so I'll show you all that. Um, but anyway, so it's cut out so you will need to print out what you're going to cut out and then you need a work surface. And so for this one, I am going to use these aluminum clad panels. This is from coastairbrush.com remove this. I've got a banner up here that shows their website. This is where I get the majority of all my airbrushing supplies. Very good customer service and knowledgeable staff if you have questions. And one of the best sources I've ever found for everything that you could ever need for airbrushing. A very comprehensive website, so check that out. But anyway, I'm going to use something from Coast Airbrush called Aluminum Clad Panel. Again, this is 12 by 18. And what's cool about this is it's aluminum, but it's got a rigid plastic core on the inside, or rubber or something like that. It makes it really, really rigid, nice and durable. Um, rather with aluminum, aluminum that thin typically bends quite a bit, or you can dent it pretty easily. And then it comes, it's got a protectant coating on it. You can uh, peel that off when you're ready to get started. But the other thing that's cool, it's got a white side, and on the other side is a black surface to paint on. And so you get, can kind of practice either way. You can um, order some of these in different sizes and then you can do practices on both sides. So um, excited to try that out for this. The other thing that you could use would be like gesso board. That's another thing I really like to airbrush on when I'm gonna do something that's framed. The reason I like this and this is because it's a hard surface. And so it's also a smooth surface. So a lot of times in airbrushing, you end up doing some masking, which we are definitely going to do some masking and cutting directly on the surface. And so it's trickier to do that on paper and it's really tricky to do that on canvas. So as we progress, should you choose to use paper or canvas, I will discuss ways you can still do this project on paper and canvas. But if you have the ability, go ahead and get some gesso board from art supply stores, art supply websites, even Amazon sells this in different sizes. This works well. Um, Coast Airbrush has this. They also have some aluminum sign blanks. Um, and you can also just use a chunk of steel if you have a body shop or you know a body shop that can take some steel or aluminum and prime it and base coat it. And then ideally clear coat it with a two part uh, catalyzed clear coat and then sand it flat with 800 grit sandpaper. That's a really good surface to work on as well. So if you're going to paint on something like this um, aluminum clad or anything that's metal 
that's been painted, you typically have to sand the surface. And so one of the ways I like to sand and prep things, if you watch the videos on prepping out a helmet, I like this, a body shop showed me this several years ago. Works kind of cool, it's like sandpaper, but it's more durable and it's got almost like a Velcro on the back. You can cut a Scotch-Brite pad to that size and it works really well to scuff up the surface. You can also just use regular Scotch-Brite pads or even just regular sandpaper. Um, if you're using gesso board, check out the first part of my um, end of the trail, the Indian and the Sunset training video. I talk about how to prep that. But basically, this is a nice smooth surface, but it works best for airbrush if you do lightly sand it to knock down any of the extra little gesso, little um, parts that stick up. So after you sand the surface, you'll need to clean it. And so I like to use a water-based cleaner like Windex or the Sprayway. Um, or House of Color has a post sanding cleaner. And then, so some sort of a water-based cleaner and then also an automotive grade wax and grease remover. Um, obviously, if you're doing this on paper or canvas, you don't have to worry about any of that. Um, and so up next, then you'll need some paper towels. Different sizes of masking tape are handy. And obviously an airbrush hooked to an air compressor with some sort of a pressure regulator. For this one, I'll be using two types of airbrushes, an Iwata Eclipse with a .35 fluid nozzle and a needle setup. And then my ultimate favorite airbrush is my Iwata Custom Micron CMC. Both of these are probably 15 years old and you just keep replacing the needle and the fluid nozzle periodically and they typically keep on going. And so for this lesson, I am going to use water-based paint because a lot of um, you students out there are painting out of um, apartments or homes or something like that where you don't have good ventilation like I do in my studio. So water base is a little bit uh, more friendly on your lungs and your home. And so I'm gonna use Createx illustration paint. And so it's water base, but it does have its specific type of reducer and it's called uh, 4012. Um, I've seen it in the past also called high performance reducer. Um, I just ordered this in from Coast Airbrush. And then there's also an additive that they've come up with called 4030 balancing clear that is um, an additive that you can add up to 25% and into your um, airbrush paint and it should help it flow a little bit more like solvent paint. So we're gonna try that out on this video for you. And then the colors, if you wanna take a note um, of what colors you're gonna need for this, you will need white, black, orange, yellow, burnt sienna, burnt umber. If you don't have these colors, just any type of a brown color will work. Um, if you do have access to these illustration colors, they're nice. There's burnt sienna, burnt umber. Um, illustration sepia is a very, very dark brown. So those will all come in handy for this. But like I said, if you only have a brown color, you can mix brown with a few drops of black and get some nice uh, different gradients of um, brown. And you need some sort of a blue. So that's basically it for the colors that you're going to need. If you do happen to have a color called ochre, that's a really nice golden yellow color. Um, so that one will work as well. But if you don't, you can use yellow with a couple drops of brown and you can get that same kind of a look out of it. And the other thing that you will need is some sort of a respirator or mask. And then I also recommend ventilation, some sort of a ventilation fan to go ahead and draw out. Even water base will put out a cloud of airbrush paint and it's good to protect your lungs and your environment. Here's a picture of the Photoshop rendering for this lesson for you. I've got it designed to where I'm gonna paint it on 12 by 18 inches, but you can paint it on whatever size you would like. Um, but anyway, so I took a picture of this eagle several years ago. I love the lighting on it. And so I came up with kind of a real simple background that should be somewhat of a beginner slash intermediate type lesson. And so what I've done is I've printed this out on my large format printer. If you don't have a large format printer, you can just print it in a couple different sections and then tape it together before you start cutting it out. But anyway, so this is what the uh, Photoshop rendering looks like for the project. So here is my large format printout. I did not print it in color, but uh, you will be able to go ahead and print out the uh, reference. It's actually a picture of the painting that I am going to paint for this video. 
And so yours is going to be a little bit easier to figure out what to cut out because when I make mine and when I paint mine, I'm going to have the trees and the tips of the mountain and things be much more pronounced than this rough Photoshop rendering that I did. But I will show you what to cut out. So the first thing you're going to want to cut out is the perimeter of the eagle. And so using an X-Acto knife with a nice sharp blade, I would cut this out as precisely as you can. Try to not damage the paper on either side because we will be able to use this for masking and back masking steps as we progress through the lesson. Under here, the feathers are kind of fuzzy, so if you kind of make quite a few of them really nice and small feathers like this, that'll come out nicer for you. So I'll finish cutting that out off camera. I'll show you a little bit of the beak, the eagle's beak. Be really precise right around this. Eagles have a very pronounced shape of their beak. So you want to make sure you get that correct. I'm using a cutting mat to cut on. You can get all this from hobby type stores. Joann's, Hobby Lobby, Michael's, things like that. Try to cut the beak out in one smooth motion. Don't stop and start and that'll come out a lot smoother for you. And you can change the shape of some of these feathers if you want to. Um, sometimes when eagles are there, when they're cold, they'll fluff up their feathers. You can make them more jagged or they'll make them really smooth to their head. You can do it either way. This one's kind of a mix between both. Whenever you're cutting out a reference like this, try to not be a slave to your reference. And if you find areas to improve, you might as well go ahead and make those changes now. Okay guys, so I've got uh, the perimeter of everything cut off like I described. Um, the other thing I wanted to point out is I put just little pieces of 1 8 inch tape to kind of hold things together. Um, kind of a good idea, especially if you start making a bunch of cuts and it's all just going to fall apart. You can just put a few of these strategically in and they will hold everything in place. Alright, I've converted my workstation. It's actually an old drafting table. You can put it up on different angles. It's pretty cool. And so I've peeled off the outside and I've got everything in my reference here so I can take a look at it while I'm painting. The other thing you want to do is if you are using the method like I am where this is um, stuck to the surface, you want to go over all these little feathers, push from inside out and make sure they're all pushed down. Don't go from outside in because you'll lift them up. If you are using canvas or paper and you just have your paper stencil taped in place right here, um, then when you're going to do this next step, I would recommend putting on a glove and then holding it down as you spray. And so what I'm going to do next is I've chosen this to be a really nice dark winter type scene. And I've also made it to where you won't have to do a bunch of freehanding on these trees. We're going to use a paper stencil for that. So being that that said, what I want to do now is I want to paint this entire background black. So I've got black in my airbrush. Again, this is Createx illustration paint. Um, when you open up Createx, it's your first time using it. Typically you'll have to open this up and pull off a little seal in there. There's also a little marble inside. And these are to where you can open them up or you can close them down. If you screw it down, it's closed. Then you can shake it up. And you can hear there's a little ball inside there. You wanna shake this up for a minute or two to uh, thoroughly mix the paint. Add it to your airbrush and then add some of that reducer, the 4012. Just go ahead and add maybe 10% of your solution of whatever you put in your volume of your airbrush and then mix it up. You can also mix up your paint in a Dixie cup and stir it up if you like. Um, I kind of like just use it into my airbrush and shake it up. And then once you've shaken it up and it's all mixed well, then you could blow it out, purge out all that paint and get into your nice reduced paint mixture. 
So since this is going to be just covered quickly, I, heart, I don't have as much reducer as if I was going to put on um, detail work. So let's go ahead and start spraying. But I want the moon and I want everything else to be more bluish. So I'm going to mix up a bluish white color. So I'm going to shake up my white airbrush paint. I'm going to fill it up to probably about there. And then I'm going to take some of my blue. I'm going to add just a few drops. Probably equivalent of about five to six drops. And then I'm also going to add reducer. Approximately 10%. And then I'm going to put some of this balancing clear in. Again, this will make it, oops, I forgot to take the seal off. That's what I was talking about before. Brand new paint bottles typically have that in there when they're shipped out. Balancing clear mix additive. Adding in approximately 10% maybe 15, it doesn't have to be perfect. And that is to allow this to spray a little bit more like solvent-based paint. So I'm mixing that up, that looks like a nice light blue color. If it's too blue, you add more white. If it's not blue enough, you add more blue. Put the lid on, and then purge it. Get what's mixed up in here through the body of the airbrush. That looks like that's going to be a pretty nice color. Alright, so next I'm going to spray the moon. I'm going to hold it down on the edges. They're brushing this bluish white mixture. And with water base, I do multiple passes. And then for the snow itself, remember we cut out a few of these areas where the snow is large and bright. So I'm just going to peel those back and fold those back. Tearing the paper went towards the edge. See how that's cut just a little piece so I can just trim that. A lot of this mountain will be done freehand with these larger snow areas. I wanted to use a paper stencil. So that's exposed. I can hold those down. And airbrush. I'm not going all the way around the edges. I'm just putting it here and there so I get some hard edges and some softer edges. I'm making sure where I've got it folded I don't spray all the way to the fold otherwise you'll have a real sharp crisp which I don't want. And now I want to release the tape and expose the entire mountain. But I want to leave the pine trees.
Here's a final look at the Eagle Alt Complete. And one last look at the Createx illustration colors used. I also use Iwata Eclipse and an Iwata Custom Micron. Hope you learned a lot.